Ladies and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 400 likes on the video, that would be spectacular. Now, we, you join us on uh, the uh, finances page. I thought I'd start with a different screen for us, just so you guys can take a look. Now, you might notice we've got more transfer budget. That's because out of nowhere, the board gave me another 20 million quid. I am enjoying this at the moment. I don't know where it came from, because frankly, I don't really think they've got the money for that, to be honest. But there you go. And that meant that I've had the money to go and get Bozo. But anyway, enjoy some highlights of the games we played this month. And we'll talk about that in a sec, as well as a couple of other bits. So enjoy this, and I will see you guys in a sec for the Besiktas game. Shelby over the top for Welbeck. Simple ball and a simple goal for Swansea City. Disappointed. We put out a weak inside, but Welbeck has given Swansea the lead here. I'm not really that bothered about this cut, to be honest. That's a pretty poor result in here, considering Swansea had 10 men in for most of the second half. That, that's poor from us, really. Farmer wins it again. Finds Carlos. Finds Fabio. He's got support out wide in Everton. Can he get to the box? Can he get a shot away or whip across him? He does. Fabio's in and this time we get the deserved lead. It's taken us a little while and a few good chances, but we do have the lead from Fabio. Oh, his hair's gone. That's a shame. Well, there we go. A 1-0 win over Bournemouth. I mean, it's a good win. It's just mm, the injuries worry me. That's the problem. Isola. Oh, and there it is. It's Carno with the goal. Wimbledon finally take the lead. The pressure has been on for most of this game with a heavily rotated team, but we've got the lead and that's what we needed. It's his dream. Gets it through. Ball across. Kirk's in there and it is 2-0 to Wimbledon. Adam Kirk's third of the year. Ramslow with a wonderful cross. And that should be game, set and match now. Good stuff. There we go. A 2-0 win with a heavily changed squad. And we are looking good to maybe go through to the next round. Ibala. Oh, Quaison. Good block again, but it's not the end of the day here, I don't think. Dorosh. Oh, what a goal that is from Man United. They've been the better side today. We've just, the, the injuries have really hit us. Everton and Fabio out for weeks is going to be a main issue for us this season. Well, there we go. 1-0 United. Injuries to key players have really hit this team hard. But what I would say is on another season, like we'd have lost this 4-0 instead of 1. There is definitely still positives to be taken. Beyond him. Will he find any of them? Goes for Farmer. That's a nice bit of play. Can he slip it through the channel? Carlos is in behind here. Carlos has made it 1-0 to Wimbledon. Carlos was set to get further forward and he scored the goal to get his reward. Wimbledon won full and nil. We need a good win here. <laughs> Benali won by Planich though. Sets Eisler away. Can he get a good cross in? Or is he going to come inside himself? Finds Mateus. Good save. On the rebound and Carlos has grabbed himself a brace in like five minutes. He may only have five finishing or whatever, but he's doing a great job today. He's their main threat in the box. So in theory... Oh my goodness gracious me. The goalkeeper is right there. And it practically went through his hands. I hate those goals. But there you go. 2-1. One, one. And he's actually found Carlos, amazingly. Who finds Mateus. Who's not really done a lot today. But he's got man out wide. Oh, he's lost the ball. Farmer bombing forward, amazingly. Eisler, what a pass that is for Everton. He must score and he does. That is a great ball from Eisler. Wimbledon 3, Fulham 1. We've really stepped it up a notch in this second half. And pushing Carlos further forward has been the key to that, I think. There we go. Wimbledon 3, Fulham 1. My favourite thing about that game, though, is that we were able to step it up and play well and score three goals without our strikers being on form. And that says something to me a lot, in fact. Right then, guys, we are back. We're going to do a question of the day while you guys take a little look at Gonzalo Bozzo, who will be joining us. He did get a work permit. He's Peruvian. He's right back. And believe me right now, we need a right back in this team. We need one dire, um, basically. Now, he's not superb, but we've had to pay. We're paying, I think, 6.25 million up top for the guy. Um, and there's a few more in sort of clauses and whatnot. But for the most part, I think it's a reasonable sale. Um, but of course, we couldn't do it at first, but then I managed to get him back. Thing is, the uh, club that he was at, Monterey, and in fact, he's still there, were very, very sort of on the fence about it. We had managed to sort of unsettle him and get him to move. Um, but then, of course, when the transfer fell through because of the money, I then had to redo the entire process. But we did get him for the same amount because he complained. As you can see, he's unhappy about the high asking price. But we did get him in the end, and he will be joining us in January. So, question of the day. And today's question is this. Where do you see Fulham in five years? Now, I'm going to open this up to where do you see your club in five years? Uh, for me, um, I see Fulham celebrate the fifth anniversary of you asking me this question, but also... Uh, probably in League 2, to be honest. I, I don't see us going anywhere. We're probably going to just keep getting relegated. We're going to probably... I, I see us doing a sort of a Wigan or a Blackpool. Uh, not in terms of money, because the thing is, Fulham are fucking loaded. And yet we are just incapable of doing anything. Uh, which is a shame. But it's it's really a shame to see your club go like that. But it just feels like we're going to end up going to the wall. Uh, and by going to the wall, I don't even mean financially it's just such a shame but there you go it's just one of those things you kind of have to deal with where do you guys think your club will be in five years do drop um yeah if you have any ideas for a question of the day drop those in the comments with the hashtag qotd um but yeah so one more thing i want to show you as well actually before we go into the league actually screw it we'll just do it from here um so injuries have not exactly been fantastic for us this month we lost fabio and everton in separate 
incidents. As far as I know, they are both back now in theory, but they, they certainly cost us. But you might notice in the last game against Fulham, we sort of stumbled onto something in that game because we've been a little bit low scoring this season and that was a problem. But in the Fulham game, we scored three times, none of which came from the strikers that were on the pitch at the time, two of which came from Carlos. And what I did was I pushed him basically up to an attacking uh, mindset, which means he got forward a bit more and he was always there in case he was bouncing on rebounds, he was getting in behind and it's great. And I, I really want to see that. The problem is because he's got that poor finishing, I wonder if that could affect him in the long run. But remember, Baltam can play there too. So there's a lot of potential in that team. We've had to rotate a lot this year. Now you think, okay, you're ninth place right now, which is not good. But bear in mind, we're still only four points off a of fifth. So we're not exactly far behind. Uh, we're, you know, we're closer to the top four than we are to the relegation zone. Uh, so that's always important to note. And a good little run, if we can get one, will get us back on the horse, so to speak. So I I'm not entirely bothered about it. Now, one thing I did want to show you guys um, is some of you asked me about Bolton again and couldn't believe where they were. Well, you're going to believe this because Bolton, I well, the last time I checked, they were bottom of the conference. They are still bottom of the conference. Bolton are going to get relegated again. They've won two matches in 22. They've at least gained some points this year, but they are looking atrocious um, and they're, they're basically going to get relegated again. I might actually turn that league on again just so that I can see what Bolton are doing in it when they get relegated, inevitably. Let's have a look at their senior squad. Oh, that's their senior schedule. What are you doing there? I just thought I'd show you this. Um, I don't know if these guys, whether you even recognise any of these names, but if you're a Bolton fan, take a little look. Uh, pause it here and have a little look at that. But I just thought you guys would like to see that, basically. Um, so, yeah, computer is running a lot smoother today, which is really, really nice. I think about some changes I made have worked. 15 goals in 16 games for Fabio is still exceptional. Don't get me wrong. Um, and Carlos is starting to contribute more now, which is nice to see. Assist-wise, Everton has 11, which is phenomenal. I think that might be as many as he got last year already. Uh, Eisler has still got six, so that's nice to see as well. He's doing okay. I'm just trying to figure out a way to get the best out of him at the moment. Uh, as for all, average rating, he generally gets a decent average rating as well. Most of the players in this team that play regularly, apart from maybe Mateus, uh, get good ratings. So player of the month is Fabio, of course, despite playing a few less matches. So let's jump straight into things uh, against Besiktas. Now, the changes I made in the Fulham game. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do that today. I'm probably just going to go with our standard one because I don't... But we can change it anyway. All I did was I put Carlos onto a more support role. Uh, sorry, onto a more attacking role. I don't really know how much of a difference that makes, but it seems to mean he'll make those forward runs. Now, the issue with Carlos is his poor finishing. It's up to seven now, which I guess is good, but mm, I feel like he's going to get in good positions and not always be able to actually put the chances away, whereas someone like Baltam, I think, has much better finishing. 11. So if we were to put Baltam in that position as an attacking, uh, as an attacking playmaker... Hmm, I, don't, I just don't know at this point. We've got a lot of options, which is nice. Planet, I'm going to have to rest. Let's just do a quick pick and move some stuff around. Right, Planet is going to drop out for Anderson, and Mankio is not fit again yet, so Achibar will have to come in, because we've lost Njuku as well, which is not good, and Fraser Forster, but that's not really such a big deal. Uh, no point in putting Planet on the bench, although Stoyle can come in there, and Mankio... I might leave him on the bench just because we've got really no other options at this point, uh, so it's kind of difficult. So amazingly, despite all the strengthening, we still find ourselves down to the bare bones because we lost some key players. Uh, but there you go. That's just how things go, isn't it? So we're going to go with Fabio Isler, Carlos Everton, Ramsalar Farmer, Cresswell Gomez, Anderson and Achibar with Ribeiro in goal. Now, we've rested players relatively... I I've rotated the team a hell of a lot, as you would have seen from some of the players that started games. I've been rotating Masek and Ramsalar in the middle, um, which is nice to see. But I feel like today we just kind of have to go for this one because... If we can win here, it will give us a real chance. I think if we win here, actually, that's us qualify for the next round. So we're going to go for it and just see what happens, basically. Um, I think, yeah, if we win here, we'd go on to 11 points and Besiktas would be on 7, which means we would, in fact, be qualified. And I think there's even a chance for us to win the group today if things go well enough, but you just never know. Um, we've got Braga at home in the next match, so we could easily uh, sort things out there, hopefully, but you just never don't know. Right, Carlos again. Did I put him as an attacking playmaker during... Is he set to attacking? See if this works. If he is, that'd be quite interesting, actually. Isla, oh, go on. Oh, he scored it. First ever goal for Wimbledon. Besiktas nil, Wimbledon won. Philippe Isla, you might notice some of the hair has changed again. I don't know, because I've not played this since yesterday, and I wonder if it's because there's a day as part... I don't know. Because the Fabio's hair... I recorded four episodes yesterday, and Fabio's hair was the same in all of them, but I started the game up today, and it was different. So I, I just don't know what, this, what it is with that. It might just be the Devsky's world of hair, but some people have said they've noticed it on the normal regens too. Fabio this time to grab an assist. I didn't think Iceland should have shot from here, and it's terrible goalkeeping there from Irma, uh, but it is 1-0 to Wimbledon, and that would win us this group in theory. If things stay as they are right now, it would win us the group, as well as qualifies for the next round, which means I could rest players uh, for the final game against Braga, um, which means it wouldn't, you know, there's no point in doing that one as a live com if that was the case, although I don't know when that game actually falls. Probably find it's a bit too close for that anyway, but it does look like at the moment we are heading through to the next round of the Europa League, which remember, we were only expected to get to the group stage and that's where we went straight in at. So we've achieved our objectives just by entering the tournament, which is great, but it looks like we're going to go, oh, hello. Right. 
There we go. Great tackle from Gomez again. He's such a good player that nothing he does... Like, okay, he makes a mistake occasionally, but he does so much good that sometimes you can almost forgive him for the mistakes he makes occasionally. I'd like to get that out of his game if we could, but hey, for now he's still... Oh, what a ball that is from Achibar. Fabio's got the pace to get through here, I think. Oh, it's a poor effort from Fabs. I need him to get it. He got a goal... Who was it he got a goal against? Was it against Rapid Vienne? I can't remember, but he certainly looks good in that game. And I, I think the mistake I made against uh, Braga was playing like we were about... You know, playing like the worst side, where in fact we were clearly the better team. And Fabio, oh, we're looking solid today, but we just need to get a few more shots on target. But again, a goal has come for us, and it wasn't from one of our strikers. So that again proves that we've got goals. Everton could look out wide, maybe. God, don't lose the ball here, though. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. But luckily, we've got players back, and oh, hang on. We're playing a goalkeeper on defend, and he's actually come and claimed the ball. That's what I want sweeper keepers to do. Why didn't they do it when he was actually supposed to do that? Uh, but hey. Doesn't matter. We've looked pretty solid defensively this season so far. I think we've conceded 17 goals in like 13 league matches, which for me is not bad. Uh, it certainly looks like it's going to be on for an improvement. We've scored a few less this year so far, but I feel like if we can just sort that OLO. Oh, oh, he's gone past all of them. Oh. Verbic with the equaliser, and that's poor from us because they two of them let him go past him. I mean, he's obviously got great dribbling, but he's gone past one, goes past another, cuts inside, great save from Ribeiro, and then... Oh, he's gone cheeky with the little flick there. That's a shame. Uh, okay, we need to do better, but we're doing okay so far. I don't feel like this game is over. Yet. Um, well, it certainly isn't over. I've played 30 minutes. What do you want about that? Right, so Fabio's not had the best game so far. He's sort of averaging at the moment. He's not really moved from that. Right, Achibar. I was impressed with some of the passing he's shown today. Oh, cleared away. Go on, Sammy. Oh, well, I mean, that is just pure luck that that's fallen to us there. But Philipp Eisler scores his first and his second goals for the club in the same game. Um, this is definitely fortunate. Farmers that were headed knocked down here and the two defenders, oh my days. And Eisler has an open goal to slot it into and we're back in front here in Turkey with Philipp Eisler. Maybe this is the day that he finally hits the ground running for us. He's got a few assists this year, six, which is a lot more than... I think that's better than we saw last year from the likes of Carno and Cleverly. So we can definitely take solace in that. Uh, and he's been superb today. Now, Sam Farmer is looking a little bit low on fitness. But the problem is, the main man that I would bring in to replace him is unfortunately having to fill in at right back. Uh, so we can't really do much about that at the moment. Um, okay, let's just take a little look at the pro zone anyway. You might notice I've got the average player positions turned on, the overall one. People said that that's not a bad shout to turn on. It actually does sort of show you a little bit if there's any ways you can get around them. Um... Also shows you where your players are running. We're actually doing both wings, and Eisler is having a decent game today. And I just wonder if we should actually exploit this left flank, get the ball to him a bit more. He's got the confidence. He's playing well, and for once, we might actually be able to exploit this left flank and get some results. Maybe it's because Besiktas have marked out, um, marked Everton out the game, but admittedly, Eisler has, you know... <laughs> okay, he's run the ball straight out of play. We'll take that any day of the week. Now, hmm, we're looking good, but again... One thing that has bugged me about this is the lack of shots on target, and that has been a problem for us. Um, now, actually, I did want to quickly check whether I do have Carlos set to be an attacking playmaker or not. Um, he is set to attack. That's interesting. So it's worked out quite well for us today. We've created good opportunities. Only one of the goals has come from a striker today, so it feels like we're getting a bit more goals from elsewhere. Um, Brian Gomez could probably do with a switch up at some point here, and I'd be tempted to get Kevin Stoyle on for a little bit, just because he's starting to lack a little. Although he is playing well, he's just starting to a little, fall a little bit off the pace. And I'm actually tempted to get Carno on instead of Carlos. Um, I've been deploying him as a more central role, although we've got options there with Carno, and we've got, obviously, Baltam. I've played him a couple of times there off the bench. Thomas Andrade's been injured for Besiktas, but for the moment, we're keeping them out pretty well. Oh, no, this is us. Iso, if he could get an assist today as well. Everton. Go on, Sam. We're so good from corners lately, particularly in this competition. Everton. Achibar. Surely he's not got a shot in him. Stoyle comes back for Carno, and that is 3-1 to Wimbledon. And we have wrapped this game up here in Turkey. And with it, well, not quite the group, but our goal difference is a lot better than Braga's, I think. So we may well have done, uh, unless we were to get an absolute hiding at home to them. A little bit of luck again there, uh, the way the ball fell to Carno. We've got to say we've rode our luck a little bit at times today. We've played well, though, and I think we deserve the win. But I tell you what, actually, Braga have put four past... Um, rap uh, not rapid Austria VM there's a chance there that we might actually be in for a bit of a battle on the last day cleared Eisler does well wins it Carno's got it up the pitch looks over the top for Fabio but Fabio couldn't quite make the run he's not been on his game today um, I've just not been overly impressed I mean he scored a did he score a goal no he didn't did he um, in fact all three of the goals today once again have not come from strikers and that to me is a good sign in a way because it means we don't have to rely on them like, it means that we'll play better when they're in form but we don't have to rely on them when they're not Carno no, that's poor Beck, Veli. I just wonder if there's another goal in this game. 
but it might be coming from them because they're actually starting to push quite heavily at us. Stoil does well, but this is gonna this is a goal. Oh, well done. Okay, so last change is gonna be Fabio off, and I keep trying to give Mateus chances. I really wanted to find some form. It's a bit like when we first got Adam Kirk in that first season. I was giving him those opportunities off the bench because we really just needed him to find some form. And he never really did that first year, but I think he just needs the game experience anyway. Eisler, um, who's had a stonkingly good performance today. I've been really impressed with him. Ramslot, over the top for Mateus, who's got a bit more pace, but he's not going to be able to get in on goal here. I wouldn't have... Th oh, Mateus. That's poor. But hey, um, well, one more goal and we're really rocking. Our goal difference is going to be pretty damn high, I'd think. So... Even with that 4-0 win for Braga, we might still be able to... Let me just quickly take a little gander. It should show. So ours is plus 8. Theirs is plus 4. So a 2-0 win for them. Oh, and, oh, I thought that was going to roll all the way through to him. Um, could still cause some interesting... I still feel like we'll be able to beat Braga at home. And frankly, if we were to do that, we'd take 14 points from a possible 18 in our Europa League group. It would be pretty damn sweet. Pledi. Oh, my. That's... Mm, good goal from Pledi. It's can't deny that, but mm, could the goalkeeper be a bit, a bit better? Could we have dropped a little deeper, perhaps? Probably. Um, let's just not... Oh, dear. Wow, look how high we're pushed up. Farmer making a run from deep for some reason. Don't really know why. Don't really care at this point. Carno. Oh, finds Mateus. That's a terrible angle. He'll shoot anyway, though. Yep. <laughs> uh, we've got three minutes to go. We probably... I feel like we deserve the win. We've played well enough to win the game. Uh, had to get a bit of luck at times, though. Oh, hello. Carno on the edge. Maybe a shot? Nah. Just going to hang on to the ball. Probably for the best. And into the channel. And that should... Oh, there's still a minute to go. Arango. Oh, no. Have I just made a horrible error by not dropping deeper? Someone put a foot in. They've got... Where are my left-sided players gone? Verbich. Ah, oh, that's poor. Let him do it. Let him shoot. To be fair, Besiktas have created some good opportunities as well. And they've managed to create better chances with less shots. So the thing we need to be able to be good at is creating better shot opportunities uh, with less actual shots on target there we go Besiktas 2 Wimbledon 3 and we are through to the next round of the Europa League which is lovely and of course this game's taken quite a while to play apologies if this episode is a little bit long uh, yeah our goal difference is still a bit better than Braga's and we're playing at home so you'd feel that we'll probably be good enough to beat them uh, in the home match or at least get a draw if we were to lose that and it looks pretty damn good for us to be honest and besides they're going to be trying bloody hard though but anyway let's see what we're going to be doing in the next episode yeah that's a bit too close for comfort there but i'm thinking middlesbrough is around about a month away and that gives us that's four games in between there as well so there we go guys if you've enjoyed this episode and the fact that we're starting to really find a bit more form again now uh then that'll be fantastic drop a like on the video as well and i will uh yeah you should not me i can't subscribe to myself that would be silly if you have enjoyed the video as well more than that please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day and i'll join you guys in the next episode for a home game against middlesbrough we've got games against we've got some it's gonna be difficult i've got to say guys i think we could still be sort of seventh or eighth by the time that comes around but you never know i'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching Bye bye